Hi everyone, in this video I'll share 25 free transitions for Premiere Pro and show you how to use them. Let's take a look and buckle up because these are going to go by fast. Alright, so every one of those transitions, and this one, and a whole lot more, can be found on a website called Mixkit. Mixkit offers free stock video footage, stock music, sound effects, and video templates for Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. So for anyone editing YouTube videos, social media posts, online ads, music videos, Pretty much any type of video project, it's definitely a site you're going to want to bookmark. You can use Mixkit assets for personal or commercial projects, attribution is not required, and you don't have to sign up or give your email address or anything like that. There's just a ton of awesome free assets on this website, and they add new assets every week. Every video clip and every sound effect you saw and heard in that earlier montage was downloaded for free from Mixkit as well. You can find links to all these transitions, video clips, and sound effects in the description below. So let's go to Templates Premiere Pro. And you can see that Mixkit offers templates for openers, transitions, titles, logos, and on and on. All these Premiere Pro templates come in two basic formats. Mogerts or Motion Graphic Templates. These are sort of like plugins that you install in Premiere Pro. And Project Templates that you can open just like any other Premiere Pro project and use as a jumping off point or import directly into an existing project. So if we jump over to the Transitions tab, you'll see that Mixkit actually has over 100 free transition templates for Premiere Pro. Most of the transition templates on Mixkit and all 25 from the intro to this video are project templates. So in this tutorial, we're going to focus solely on those and we'll upload a tutorial specifically on Mogerts in the very near future. So let's start out with this zoom transition here. Once you download and unzip the file from Mixkit, everything you need will be in a folder like this. You'll usually get a preview video, basically a demo of the transition effect. For most of the transition templates, you'll also see an assets folder, video clips, sometimes an image. These will either be additional media needed for the transition effect itself, or sometimes just placeholder videos or images so that you can easily preview the transition within Premiere Pro. But the important file is the Premiere Pro project file. This is the actual transition template. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you could just open this project file on its own, just like any other Premiere Pro project. But more often than not, you're going to want to import this file into an existing Premiere Pro project. So I've already got a project open here. And just to keep things organized, I've created a bin in the project panel called Transitions. And I can import this Zoom Transition template by just dragging and dropping the project file into that bin. This Import Project dialog box will pop up. You're going to want to select Import Entire Project and make sure that Create Folder for Imported Items and Allow Importing Duplicate Media are both checked. Hit OK. Now you'll more than likely get a missing media warning. All we have to do is relink this missing media. Just click Locate, navigate to where you downloaded and extracted the transition files, drill down to the Assets folder, and we can make our lives a little easier by checking Display Only Exact Name Matches here. I'll select the matching file, and when I click OK, Premiere Pro will relink that file and look in the same location for any other missing media, and relink that as well. So I'll hit OK, and I like to immediately go in here and rename this imported folder to something I'll easily recognize if I come back to it weeks or months later. Now, every one of these transition templates is unique, but the basic building blocks are usually pretty similar. 
In this Zoom transition, there's a subfolder for assets, which includes the media we just relinked to, an adjustment layer sequence, and in the root of this folder, this transition sequence. Double click that, and what we've got is a fairly simple sequence here. We've got a couple stock video clips on the first track, which in this case are just placeholders, so we can preview the transition. It's these adjustment layers that we care about. These are what make up the actual transition. So I can just select these layers, hit Command-C on a Mac or Control-C on Windows to copy them, then tab over to my sequence where I want to add this transition, place my cursor roughly where I want this transition. I'm not worried about being too exact right now. I'll adjust things afterwards. Select a target track above my footage on the timeline and hit Command V to paste those layers into this sequence. Again, I'm on a Mac, Control V if you're on a PC. Then all we have to do is line up these edit points with the cut between our two clips. So I'll just move these over to the right spot and then I'll play that for you. And there you go, a nice little zoom transition from one video clip to the next. So there is a second way I can add these transition effects to my own sequences. I'll import another transition template. This time, instead of dragging and dropping, I'll just click Command-I or Control-I on a PC to import this subtle bokeh transition into my project. I'm going to rename this folder as well. I'll pop open this transition sequence. And if we ignore the placeholder videos on track one, which again are only here so we can preview the transition effect prior to using it in our own sequence, we can see that this transition is made up of three layers, an adjustment layer and two video clips. And these layers exist on tracks two, three, and four. So this time, instead of copying and pasting these layers, I'm going to go over to my target sequence, make sure insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips is turned off, and in the source patching, activate V2, V3, and V4. Okay, so source patching is a much broader topic and well beyond the scope of this tutorial. But basically, I have told Premiere Pro to insert only tracks 2, 3, and 4 from any other sequence I might drag into this timeline. So now, if I grab that transition sequence in the project panel and drop it into my timeline, Premiere Pro will insert the transition layers from tracks 2, 3, and 4 of that sequence but not the placeholder videos that were on track one. And unlike the previous transition, there are no cuts in these clips to line things up with. Instead, I just have to line up this red marker with the edit point between my two clips. So now with just a couple quick steps, I've got a nice subtle bokeh transition going on. All right, that's it for me. Big round of applause for Mixkit. And if you made it this far, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.